we had a 2.6 magnitude earthquake striking in upstate New York, above the Finger Lakes region, above Ithaca, that is, in Warsaw. It's near the uh, area, as we'll see on the map, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. And this is exactly where that second large crack goes through America. That's the New Madrid seismic zone. You can see that black crack. That's exactly where this earthquake took place. And uh, right next to the Canadian border, of course, this map is not very accurate. We've uh, already had a few days ago, I made a, a, a video concerning the northeastern United States possibly having a new supervolcano there. We know Maine has five volcanoes, four of them in a distance of 100 miles, within 100 miles. Let's go to the map to see what's going on. Okay, so this is our area right here, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. And this is the Sizewell Berkeley map. Okay, this is our, these are earthquakes above 2.5. So this was 2.6 right there. Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, and that's that crack right there. Okay, right here. This is actually the New Madrid seismic zone. It should be called the New Madrid Rift Valley because there is magma under there. And this is sloughing off towards the southeast. And this is here, three, 30 underwater volcanoes right here, pointing towards the northeast right there, which is what they, they say in millions of years could be another supervolcanic activity right there. We had an ancient supervolcanic activity around Montreal, Quebec right there. And this thing here, the uh, Great Lakes, has a mantle plume, plume under it. Nobody knows where it's coming from. There's a horseshoe-shaped mantle plume that's been there for about a, mil a billion years, 900 million years, uh, from when Europe was still attached to North America. So there's mantle plume going through Kansas, Oklahoma, through Texas, and then switching, switching west to through um, Nevada, and the eastern part going down this way along the Appalachians. That's the mantle plume formation. Nobody really talks about that. We have... I have made a few videos on that. Now, going back to the earthquake, 2.6 magnitude. This is it. These are the Finger Lake regions. I used to live in Ithaca, New York, when uh, while coming from Canada to New York. Uh, beautiful place. Uh, Cornell University there. So this is it. Okay. And if we pull out the Appalachian Mountains right there, and St. Lawrence Seaway, and into, of course, the Mississippi. Okay. So this is what's going on there. I think 60 people reported feeling it. Going back, 60 people reported feeling this earthquake. 60 right there, okay. And um, the historic seismicity. Earthquakes in the Niagara Attica zone part of southern Ontario, west New York State. Moderately frequent earthquakes, at least since the first one was reported back in 1840, the largest being 4.9 magnitude, causing moderate damage in 1929 near Attica, New York. That's around, of course, the Finger Lakes region, Ithaca, Attica, all Greek names, Syracuse. Um, earthquakes too small to cause damage are felt through roughly three or four times per decade although only one was felt during the 1940s and eight were felt during the 1960s. Earthquakes east of the Rocky Mountains, although less frequent in the west, are typically felt over a much broader region. East of the Rockies, the earthquakes can be felt over an area as much as 10 times larger than a similar magnitude earthquake in the west coast. A magnitude 4 earthquake typically can be felt at many places as far as 60 miles from where it occurred, and it infrequently causes damage near its source. Um, the faults. Earthquakes everywhere can occur on faults within bedrocks, usually miles deep. Most of the area's bedrock formed as several generations of mountains rose and were eroded down again over the last billion years. Now we know about uh, the San Andreas Fault in California. Often scientists can determine the name of the specific fault, fault that's responsible for the earthquake. In contrast, east of the Rocky Mountains is rarely the case. The Niagara Attica Zone is far from the nearest plate boundaries, which are in the center of the Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean Sea. The zone is laced with 
known faults, but few have been traced to earthquake depths. Numerous smaller or deeply buried faults may remain undetected. Accordingly, only a few earthquakes in the zone can be linked to named faults. It's difficult to determine if a known fault is still active and could slip and cause an earthquake. As in most other areas in the Rockies, the best guide to earthquake hazard in the Niagara Attica zone is the earthquakes themselves. Okay, let's remember the first thing we learned in geology is every river is a fault. That's the St. Lawrence River. Of course, all this is mantle, uh, magma underneath. Um, and everywhere you have a rift valley, you have magma. Of course, they don't know much of this magma location, but we know that we have the mantle plume here going like this and like this. So all that is mantle plume. And um, Maine has about five, we said five volcanoes, four of them in a 100 mile uh, uh, distance. These are the submarine volcanoes right here, pointing right here. So you can follow that magma right there. And um, this is magma. They don't know where it's coming from. The west goes this way. The west goes this way. At one point, Lake Superior was flush with uh, right here, Long Valley Caldera, Yellowstone. Yellowstone Lake, right there, and Hebgen Lake, that little Z there. And this is the uh, Craters of the Moon, beautiful lava flow in Idaho. So at one point, you can see how big the continental United, United States has stretched in 900 million years. Look at this. This is like, what, 100 miles? That's like over 1,000 miles, OK? A tremendous amount of, uh, and then you have this uh, rivers here. But all rivers are, are fault lines. And uh, they say, OK, we don't know why the earthquakes are taking place because it's not near the coast. Yeah, but they don't at all mention the fact that you have this mantle plume here, right here, which is very old. It's about a billion years old. So all of you there, please be very careful. And if we go back to the Canadian map, let's see. The Canadian map maps them very nicely because USGS takes them off after. Um, OK, there it is. That's the one here. Let's see what Canada has it at. Canada has it at 3.1 magnitude. OK, today's earthquake. They have it at 3.1 magnitude, whereas USGS has it at 2.6. That's a big difference. And uh, you can see they, they have it here, Buffalo, New York. OK. And you can see the activity here. Look at the activity in Maine. Okay. And look at the activity in uh, Connecticut, Vermont. Okay. Just above uh, Maine, uh, Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Canada, uh, Quebec. I used to live in Montreal. Montreal is there. Okay. Quebec. Um, so you can see that there's a big difference from 3.1 from 3.1 to 2.6. Okay, and this is all the activity on the east coast, west coast there, east coast there, a lot of uh, big earthquakes in Canada. Okay, so all of you there, please be very careful. Take your pick: 3.1 magnitude or 2.6 magnitude in the area of the mantle plume here of the Great Lakes. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.